Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to this week's Impact Wrestling Media Teleconference. This is Ross Foreman. We have uh, two special guests with us today, back by popular demand, or at least his demand. Uh, we're going to kick it off this week with the first 10 minutes with none other than Josh Matthews. Welcome, Josh. You know, Ross, I have too much class to uh, respond to what you just said. What is that noise? What is that music I'm hearing? Not too sure, but uh, what's going on with your world there, uh, Josh? Well, uh, obviously, we're going to do the same thing we did last week, guys, where uh, you guys get to ask some questions as it relates to BFG or Global Wrestling Network. But before we get to questions, um, Impact just released on ImpactWrestling.com and all of our socials um, an awesome partnership, a fantastic partnership. Uh, we are going to be doing our press conference on Friday, October 20th at 3 p.m. Eastern at Crust and Crate um, in the Lansdown Park area of Ottawa, Ontario. Uh, the site of Bound for Glory at the Stones throw away from the Aberdeen Pavilion. You're going to have the opportunity to meet and talk to Lashley and Eli Drake, the world champion, of course. They will be in attendance at the press conference. Uh, representatives from Crust and Crate, uh, they are going to be our title, our title partner um, with Impact Wrestling over the next month. Uh, the press conference is going to be awesome. They're going to unveil the first ever Impact Pizza. Uh, Lashley and Eli Drake will get to eat some of that pie. Um, they'll do autographs. They'll take pictures. Uh, you'll hear from George Hanna, who's the president of Gabriel Pizza Franchise. They're the parent company for um, Rustin Crate. So it's just going to be a, a great time. The recording has started. It's going to be a great time on Friday. Um, the press conference again right there at Crust and Crate, and then uh, we're going to do a lot of great things throughout the week of Bound for Glory with Crust and Crate. They're going to serve as the uh, official post-impact party every night. All the information that I'm giving you guys right now, I know it's a lot. It's available at impactwrestling.com, and we just tweeted it. So uh, a great partner for us. We've been having a lot of fun working with these guys and coming up with different things that we're going to be doing for the week of Bound for Glory, and it all gets started this Friday with the press conference up there in Ottawa. With that said, um, if there's any questions, I'll take them now. Josh, you, you got to explain a little bit more. Impact Pizza. What do you what do you know about the Impact Pizza? Well, Ross, uh, that's a great question. Uh, I know that it's going to be the official pizza for the week from Crust and Crate. While we're up there at Bound for Glory, there's going to be a drink as well. I don't want to give away all the details, Ross. I don't want to tell everyone exactly what the Impact Pizza and the drink are, are going to be all about. I want to let that kind of sit here on Tuesday while everyone thinks about it, and then Friday find out all of this information at the press conference up there at Crust and Crate. What, I do, what I'm doing, Ross, is, is a teaser. It's a teaser for what's going to be an incredible event on Friday with Lashley and Eli Drake. Well, you're the man. That's why we have you on the teleconference back-to-back weeks. We're going to try yes, to get and you Ross, next week as well. I'll, I'll be back every week. And Ross will be uh, recording this for our Facebook Live from Impact Wrestling's Facebook account, and we'll put everything on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, and you guys will see all of this. If you're not in the Ottawa area on Friday at 3 o'clock for the press conference, you guys can see it all on social media. Uh, again, we are trying to do everything we can to get everyone as excited as they can for Bound for Glory. Um, it's been a lot of hard work and a lot of fun, and we certainly hope that it's going to uh, pay dividends in early November for us. Uh, one note on the press conference for Friday the public is invited, and the public will have a chance to taste the Impact Pizza. There you go. That said, any questions for Josh at this point? Talking about Impact Pizza, Bound for Glory, the network, anything along those topics, you got about five, seven minutes to talk to Josh. Let's open it up for some questions with Josh. Q&A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. Hi there, Josh. It's uh, Adam from the Impact Lounge here in the UK. How are you this evening? Hello, Josh. Give Josh yes, a second. There we go. He's good to go. Josh, go ahead. Hey, I'm here, you guys. Ross has a hard time working a phone, so I'm good. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm great, thank you. Uh, as I said, I'm calling from the UK, so my question is, is about Bang for Gloria. I don't know if you've got any details yet about when and where we can see it in the UK, and uh, what the access is going to be like through the uh, Global Network app. 
in the States? Um, we had a call yesterday as it relates to Bound for Glory on the app. Nothing was finalized. Um, there's a lot of different ideas and, a different, and different ways that it's going to uh, be presented, and I think all that will get finalized here sooner rather than later. Um, and I don't know about the airing in the UK. As soon as we know, we'll let you guys know. Um, you know, we're three, less than three weeks away now. So uh, hopefully all that stuff gets sorted here this week. And when it does, uh, you'll hear it from our social media accounts. But it all, it's all being talked about and all should be figured out here sooner rather than later. You know, Oops, sorry about that. Brian Ryder here from, from Main Event Radio. Uh, Josh, I want to know what your favorite topping is on pizza. Uh, my favorite pizza topping is uh, we usually go with uh, half pepperoni, half mushroom at my house, and I do the pepperoni. Hi, it's uh, Francis Reyes from Ingring Pop. My, uh, my part is a two-part question. For the Global Radio Network, um, are you any plans to do a live stream, like, say, for the international markets like the UK? And also, as well, do you think 2018 we could see maybe a UK pay-per-view or impact show in the UK? I mean, I think we're all optimistic about all of those things, really. Um, as it relates to the live stream, are you talking basically just for BFG or a live stream for all sorts of different things? So now, uh, for all streams, as you've got on the Pluto network at the moment, because I know that a lot of UK fans would want to see that personally. Yeah, it's just, um, you know, when you leave that stream on all day, uh, 24 hours a day, I think it just gets tough to, to figure that out. I think right now it's, it's strictly the, you know, the Netflix model where you get to go into WG, uh, TWN <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and pick out, you know, you know, what you want to watch and things like that. Um, and as it relates to getting over to the UK in 2018, I don't know if that's on our calendar. I don't want to say yes or no. I know that there are a few uh, overseas events uh, planned and been talked about. I, I just can't remember off the top of my head if the UK was one of them. Thank you very much. Hey, Josh. This is Graham Matthews from HiddenRemote.com. Uh, my question for you in regards to the Global Wrestling Network, Are there anything? is there anything in the works regarding playback options, like you can kind of pick up where you left off, similar to the WWE Network at some point in time? Yeah, that was talked about yesterday. And, you know, the search optimization was talked about yesterday, you know, putting in someone's name and being able to recall a match or, or an event. Um, all of those things were certainly talked about from a tech side and, and a standpoint like that and I think that you know everyone that's working on it from that side is trying to make it as user friendly as humanly possible Hello Josh Gary Keevney from Westview and Spotlight Ireland um, my question had been well, are you from Ireland but you don't know that obviously um, with regards to the GFW app or GWN app um are you, are there any plans to showcase other um, companies that you're affiliated with? Any, adding any companies, is that what you asked? Yes. Yes, for sure. I mean, I think those talks are being had um, with various uh, independent promotions and independent wrestling companies all over the world. Um, you know, what kind of content do they have? Uh, how can we, you know, there's so much that goes into you know, getting it, you know, it, it's it's not just getting it, it's, it's making sure that it's digitized and all these things are done to the actual footage um, so that it can go up on the app. So it's 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 getting those companies, it's it's making the deal, then it's getting the footage and, and going from there. And I think that right now we've got Smash and, uh, uh, what is it, BCW, Scott's uh, wrestling promotion up there that you can see right now. And I think more and more will be added uh, as as we go on here. Hello, Josh. It's Francis from In Ring Pop again. Um, mine's a two-part question. Are there any plans in 2018 to add any original programming to the Global Wrestling Network? And also, as well, um, so you hint about this Impact Pizza. Um, what are fans um, like? Can you give us a little extra tease about the pizza? Say that last part. That last part again. Oh, can you give us an extra like um, snippet of um, what the Impact Pizza will be on? Like, what will it have? Any toppings or anything that you can you know, divulge? <laughs> um, 
Uh, I'll answer the first part first. Uh, original content on the network, yeah, I think you have to. I think I said that uh, uh, last week and in, in any other thing that I've talked about with this. I think you have to have original content. We were talking about a show this morning and a pilot and, and, and different things we want to do um, to, to come up with different original content, but it has to be strategic and smart. Um, the toppings on the pizza, no, I don't know what will be on. Um, I love That's my favorite question. Um, no, I don't know what will be on it. Um, I'm sure it will be delicious. And uh, uh, find out Friday um, from Lashley and Eli Drake. I hope it's a cheat day for those guys because pizza's probably going to be delicious. Uh, hey, Josh. Uh, this is Rizu from Sportskira. My question is, uh, will there be a return from Don West at Bound for Glory or will you and JB be calling the entire event? And uh, do you have any special appearances uh, for the announced table uh, plans? I'm working on a, a special appearance today, actually. Um, I just got done talking to the creative team about uh, some, some ideas and different things that uh, if, if it were made official today, I'd tell you guys and just spoil it, but it's not. And I don't want to do that. Um, to the best of my knowledge, JB and I will be calling the entire Bound for Glory uh, event, and I'm looking forward to all the matches um, that are going to be taking place Sunday, November 5th, live on pay-per-view. We're going to go with just a couple more questions for Josh. Hi, Josh. Uh, Dunna Corby from the Irish Daily Mirror here. I'm just calling with regards to CWN and, and the deal with Spike UK. Of course, I know Bellator in the past have had such demand because we don't get Spike UK in the Republic of Ireland. They've had demand to put Bellator events on and they've been able to stream them on YouTube. Could you see maybe GWN streaming uh, impact for fans in Ireland? Um, I think that GWN, so Ireland right now, uh, was a part of the Total Access app, correct? Correct. Right, so you guys uh, are going to be graduated to GWN, that should have already happened or is in the works of happening right now, and just depending on the delay, most territories and countries are on a 10-day delay to get the current episode of Impact, so that should be happening, um, in the in Ireland, um, uh, a ten day delay for for impact. Yeah, I, I understand that, but the 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 actual streams, you know, because on the Total Access app, we would get it a week after Spike UK got it, but we we don't get it live on Spike UK because we don't have that channel in in Ireland. So, do you think you could live stream at the same time as Spike, maybe on GWN for Irish users? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know the answer, but I'll certainly bring it up and ask if that could be something that can be can be done. It could be blocked if you guys don't get Spike UK. I don't see. Uh, again, I don't know all the the contracts and things like that, but um, I, but, it's certainly something that I can bring up. Thank you very. Much. Hey, Josh. It's Mike Johnson from PW Insider. How are you? Hey, Mike. How are you, buddy? I'm doing good. Uh, Bound for Glory weekend, obviously going to be a big weekend for the company. You guys just launched the app. Uh, one of the things WWE's done a very good job at is building programming on their network around a WrestleMania or a SummerSlam, and obviously it helps drive subscriptions. I don't know if you'll have the ability to live stream stuff, but is it possible you guys will be creating content that can go up rather quickly over Bound for Glory weekend as a way to try to bring subscribers into the GWN app? Well, uh, we shot uh, last week the BFG pre-show, um, and I know that'll air on Fight Network. Uh, check your local listings in Canada and the U.S. for when that will air. Um, we've talked about the BFG pre-show being on GWN. I think it, um, you know, it's a no-brainer to put it on there. Um, there were film crews from Toronto all over our tapings over the last year, um, all for shooting things to go on the app and, and across various platforms. Uh, if that gets released on BFG Weekend, I'm not sure. Um, but, you know, we're going to be up there. Uh, you know, Ross and, and, and Lashley and Eli will be up there Friday. They're going to shoot a bunch of stuff. Uh, when we're there Saturday for the uh, Bound for Glory backstage pass dinner, we'll shoot stuff. And, you know, it's just a matter of how quickly we can get it over to the guys and get it up. Um, but I think they're, you know, to, to, to your point of building some buzz around not only the network, but, you know, BFG itself, I think that, you know, we have to do that sort of stuff. And I think there's going to be some incentives to get the app and, and, and get BFG, all those sort of things, uh, rolling out soon. Josh, you got time for two more questions? I do have time, Ross. You know why, Ross? Because my favorite thing to do is to make Moose sit and wait and listen to everything I'm saying right now. Hi, Moose. 
Josh, it's not Moose, it's, uh, it's Adam from the Impact Lounge again, but I'm very flattered you thought uh, I have the same physique as him. Um, my question is to do with uh, taping schedules, actually, um, not so much to do with the network, but obviously, traditionally, wrestling pay-per-views have been on a Sunday night, and, and that, I'm guessing, creates havoc with your taping schedule that you then don't get a, an impact for quite a few days afterwards. Has it ever been mooted, you know, to move it to a Saturday night or a Friday night pay-per-view like boxing might do? It's a good question and a good thought, but I don't think it messes with us too much. I mean, if you wanted to do the go-home show on Thursday live and then tape something on Friday and Saturday and then do the pay-per-view live on Sunday, um, I don't think it messes with us too much with having the live show on Sunday. You know, you go live to tape on, on Monday, those tapes have to come back to Nashville. Um, it, it, that, that's all part of the process, but I don't know if moving the... Um, the pay-per-view to a Friday or a Saturday, I think you'd have to look at would the audience um, come with you if you if you moved it to a Friday or Saturday. It's a good question. Josh, my question, Gary Keaton here again. My question is similar to the last person's question. Um, I think that if you move the pay-per-view to a Friday or Saturday, you take the UK view and Richard to watch it live, because if we watch it live, in Ireland or, or UK or for some parts of Europe, we watch at midnight or one o'clock and then at four a.m. people have worked to get up in the morning. So I think we do Friday or Saturday night will be a good thing. Um, just, um, I just, really, I don't have anything else to say. Well, you know what we could do on impactwrestling.com? We can uh, put up a, uh, your excuse from work on Monday that you guys can download. Uh, we'll sign it and then everyone can stay home from work on Monday. Some great advice from uh, from Josh there. I appreciate it. Uh, Josh, once again, 10, 15 minutes of your time is, is always much appreciated. A lot of insight on the network and, of course, uh, the press conference for this Friday in, uh, in Ottawa. Any final thoughts? Yeah, just, um, again, guys, this Friday in Ottawa, this is really the kickoff to Bound for Glory um, press conference, open to the public, open to the press. It all goes down 3 p.m. Eastern at Crust and Crate. It's the official after-party location. We've had such a great time working with these guys, uh, getting in touch with them. They're like, I was told that I could ship um, from the Aberdeen Pavilion to Crust and Crate, and my chipping is, like, really good. I'm, I'm very skilled at that uh, for the golfers on the phone. Um, and then, obviously, Bound for Glory Live Sunday, November 5th on pay-per-view. Uh, more matches you'll find out uh, this Thursday on Impact. And then uh, tickets are still available for Bound for Glory. We're getting close to um, to being sold out, but they're going to release some production tickets and things like that in the near future. So if you still want to join us for Bound for Glory, you can. And then, of course, Impact tapings Monday through Friday, all at the Aberdeen Pavilion, all going to be just a great time. And then join us afterwards uh, every night at Crust and Crate uh, for, the, for the post-show party. Moose will be there, and he'll do Moose with everyone. Moose, Moose, Moose. That's it for me, Ross. I gotta go. Josh, pleasure. Talk to you next week. And now we hey, get to the, to the real star of uh, today's teleconference. I'm hoping Josh is off already. Uh, calling from uh, from the UK, but uh, let's welcome Moose. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing pretty well. How are, how are things going for you? Uh, I'm going well. I'm um, just Listen to Josh Ramble and laying on the couch waiting to come on and talk to whoever I have to talk to. That's pretty much Josh's specialty is to ramble. But uh, we know we're going to get some good stuff out of you. we got a, a kind of a real physical uh, thing with you these days involving uh, American Top Team, Dan Lambert and his crew. Uh, your thoughts on what's going on with uh, with that whole uh, mess? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, a lot of fiasco going on with that, but um, I'm having fun with it. I mean, as you can see, last Thursday, um, I did what um, most people said I should have probably went to jail for. Or I kind of um, snuck into their training facility and vandalized the place and um, took some stuff that maybe I should have taken, but um, it's all in good fun. I mean, I can't get my hands on Bobby and Mo. And um, Dan Lambert, so I guess the best thing to do in that case was to to take some free merch and to break down their um, training facility. So I had me and um, Bonner had fun doing that, and hopefully we get to have some more fun with those with those assholes. Well, I'm sure uh, all roads for you lead directly to 
Ottawa, Model for Glory on November 5th. Your thoughts uh, yeah. as the company heads up to uh, to Canada. Oh, it's awesome, man. I can't wait. Um, I, I love Canada. This won't be my first time going there. I um, have been there plenty of times, and the fans, they're great. So um, whatever my match is going to be at Bound for Glory, um, I'm, I know it's going to be awesome, and I know the fans are going to have a great time, and I know I'm going to have a great time. Well, Moose, before we open it up to media questions, let me ask you, as you heard, uh, we are launching the Impact Pizza this Friday at Crust and Crate in Ottawa. What would you want on an Impact Pizza? Oh, man, I kind of get like, uh, I haven't had pizza in so long. It's kind of making me hungry right now. Um, I get weird toppings on pizza, uh, probably sausage, pineapples, uh, mushrooms. I kind of like the whole Hawaiian pizza thing, so hopefully they have that. All right, well, we will uh, update everybody after uh, the press conference on Friday with the exact ingredients of your Impact Pizza. At this point, we'll open it up for some questions for Moose. If you have a question, it would be star six to uh, get in queue. Please identify yourself and your media outlet, and we ask for only one question at a time so we can get through as many questions as possible. Hello there, Mr. Moose. It's Francis from In Ring Pop. Um, mine is a two-part question. Um, after Bound for Glory, um, do you think you might be going for the GFW um, have, like global championships? Also, as well, um, is now it's the NFL season. Who do you think your early pick is for the Super Bowl? Um, my early pick for the Super Bowl is um, I'll say the Patriots because they're the Super Bowl defending Super Bowl champ. So, I mean, I would love to see those guys go back. And, I mean, I'm a big Tom Brady fan. I got to play with him in 2010. And um, I, I want him to win every single Super Bowl until he retires just so he could be like, I'm the only person to ever do that. And, I mean, it all depends on what. I mean, I would love to go after the um, the global championship. But I hear, I get tweets and messages from fans all the time that I should be, I should be the impact local champion. So, I mean, I would love to to get my hands on whoever wins that matchup in the main event. Thank you very much. Hey, Moose, this is Graham Matthews with Hitemote.com. Uh, over the years, Impact has had several failed secondary titles from the King of the Mountain Championship, the television title, and so on. Um, as a former two-time Impact Grand Champion, what do you think has made that title different from the rest that I just mentioned? I, I can't hear you. Kind of low. Uh, sorry about that. Question? I was just asking about your thoughts on the Impact Grand Championship and how they've kind of differed from secondary titles of the past, such as the King of the Mountain, King of the Mountain Championship, Television Championship, and so on. Um, I mean, I, I think the the Grand Championship is a is a unique um, format. Um, it kind of switches up the the whole the whole the whole game. I mean, it puts it puts more of a um, boxing slash MMA aspect to the match. And I think it's something different. And um, as you know, wrestling and, and everything different is, 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 is always good. And um, I am the two-time, I am a former two-time grand, cha- grand champion. And um, I was real good in that format. And um, obviously you saw the way I lost it. Um, I, I don't think I got beat. I think I got screwed out of it. But I mean, um, I think you guys, I think we have a good champion in EC3, and um, we'll see what happens with that title. I, I mean, like I said before and I've said in the past, I think I want to um, at some point move on to maybe throw my name in a hat to go after the, the Impact Global Champion. Um, I think it's long overdue, and I think um, I'm definitely ready to host that title up. Ryan Ryder here for Main Event Radio. Moose, uh, coming to Canada for Bound for Glory November the 5th. What are you most looking forward to do in Ottawa? Um, just put on Bound for Glory is the biggest pay-per-view of, in our company, in the, of the year for our company. And um, some would say it's the biggest, one of the biggest pay-per-view of the year. Um, so I'm looking to put on the best show that, I can, especially for this year. Um, 
So, I mean, I'm just I'm looking forward to rocking rocking the house, rocking the fans and and this pay per view is gonna be very special to me because um my brother is actually gonna be coming down with me and we have a special um entrance planned and he's gonna be with me and um so it makes this pay per view very, very special. Hi, Miss. If you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. Yeah, I saw you at Lucha Forever um, the other week. Um, I just want, want to know how, how what you previously told us that UK crowds are your favourite. So I just want to know what makes them so special. Okay, oh, can you say that again? You're breaking up. Sorry, man. Um, you previously told us that the British crowds are your favourite. So I just wanted to know what, what makes them so special. Oh, uh, the British crowd is awesome, and uh, I feel like they they get very into every match. Um, they get very into every match, and some some people take it as they're trying to get themselves over, but I take it as them being into into what we do, and um, it's just always special wrestling from the British crowd, and um, I mean, I'm here now, and I, and I love it. Hey guys, uh, Mike Lane of CBS and Sirius XM uh, Satellite Radio. Uh, really quick, uh, well, two questions. Russ, if you get a chance, can you talk about any possible Hall of Fame entrance for this year, or maybe that's uh, pushed to next? And then Moose, um, why do you think out of all the professional sports and impact has been on the cutting edge they brought in, uh, baseball professional players, NASCAR people, et cetera, but far more footballers you know, coming up to – today with the champ like yourself have crossed over to pro wrestling, starting with uh, Bronco Nagurski and Leo Namalini, uh, then to the 60s LA Rams. Some guys there, like Don Chewy, said they made more in the offseason pro wrestling than they did uh, in the NFL. Why do so many gravitate, uh, and, and is the skill set similar uh, with football? Obviously, you know, the impact sports and stuff. Oh, I mean, I feel like uh, that's a tough question, but um, just to answer it, I feel like um, I guess there's a lot of football fans, there's a lot of wrestling fans, football, that would be the easy answer to that question. But um, I think the skill set is totally different. I mean, you're talking about two different things. Like, it's two different things. Like, you can't really compare it. Um, they're, they're different. I mean, I guess the only thing coming from football going to Wrestling maybe because you you're an athlete, so it maybe helps with the transition. But other than that, it's two different disciplines, it's two different sports, it's two different skill needed to do both. Like you can't take a wrestler and throw him in a football field and say he would succeed. And I mean, from all there's been a lot of football players who have tried to be wrestlers and failed. It's just the the handful that succeed um, makes people think that oh. Um, it's easy coming in, but um, it's two different disciplines. I feel like Impact does a great job in bringing crossing over because, I mean, it's always great to, to get get fans from different different um, sports to to come in your sport to see what we do. Like, I mean, look at how many viewers we had just from D'Angelo Williams uh, at Slammiversary coming in and putting on the show like he did. We we had we had a lot of crossover fans coming in just to see, oh, will D'Angelo Williams do good or will he fail or what will he do? And, you know, I think Impact does a, a great job of of doing that. As we're doing again this paper this pay per view we've been doing lately with with Steph, um Stefan Bonner coming in and with um King Mo coming in and the whole thing we're doing with American Top Thing. So um all praise to Impact Wrestling for for doing that crossover. Mike, thanks for your call, especially the uh, flashback football names, uh, Leo Namalini and others. Uh, first part of your question, I will uh, look into that and try to have an answer for everybody by next week. Uh, hi, this Alistair again. Um, bring it back to my early question about uh, the British crowds. What uh, UK-based wrestlers have you been been impressed with over here? 
Oh man, I just had a, a match with um, Joe Coffey two days ago, and it was phenomenal. Uh, I mean, I'm a big fan of of his, and um, I I've said it before in the past, and I'll say it again. He's definitely a guy that I think Impact should think about bringing in. Um, he's a phenomenal talent, good on the mic, outstanding in the ring. And there's, there's more guys out here that's pretty good, um, unsigned guys that's pretty good, like um, guys like Ryan Smile and um, Chris Brooks and um, Travis Banks. All those guys are unsigned and um, are real good talents. And, I mean, I do know that at some point, Impact will be coming to do some shows in the in the UK. I, I don't know what the dates are or, or when, but I mean these are guys that I feel like we should definitely think about um, bringing it, bringing in. Hey, this is Riju from Sports Kira. Uh, my question is: I've seen you wrestle uh, largely before, and you had a fantastic contest in India. Uh, what's your impression of him as an opponent? And uh, the second part is: Will you actually consider an MMA fight in the future, considering your current program? Thank you. Um, I've always been a big fan of um, MMA. I, I actually, one of my real good friends, Frank Trigg, that I've known for a while. Um, he's one of the guys that helped me get into professional wrestling. Believe it or not, um, actually trained me for a little bit of MMA. I, I actually had flirted with the idea of, of um, going in the octagon at, at some point or whatever you call it. I know the octagon is more of a UFC phrase, but going into MMA. But, I mean, um, but with what's going on now with American Top Team, you never know. I mean, uh, it, it all depends, I guess, if the right matchup and the right amount of money came up, I wouldn't be opposed to doing it. And, um, uh, I mean, I have good friends in the in the in the business that could help me out with training if that ever came up. But I, I you never say never, and I would never say no to it. Um, it all depends on on how it came up. And hey, Moose, it's Mike Johnson from PW Insider. How are you? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. So uh, talk a little bit about working with Stefan Bonner. Obviously, you guys are going to team Bound for Glory. You're a two-sport superstar. You came from the NFL and moved into pro wrestling, MMA into pro wrestling. Uh, in your eyes, what's this transition been like so far and what's, what it's been like uh, working oh, with him as you guys build the program? How oh, so I said, what's it been like working with him as you build up the program? Oh, can you repeat that? Like, I'm sorry, my, my connection is pretty bad so that's okay uh what's it been like what has it been like working with stefan bonner as he's made the transition to wrestling uh and what's your thoughts on his transition so far and just thoughts on working with him oh man um stephen bonner is awesome man he's he's a real cool guy um awesome to work with and um he actually showed me some stuff um which i'm sure you guys will see in the next couple of um maybe even this Thursday on TV um, with some of the training we did together. Um, I showed him some stuff. You may now ask your question. Hi, Ryan Bowman from the GorillaPosition.com. Moose, I was actually covering the St. Louis Rams when you were in camp with them, so I'm I'm pretty familiar with your, your football background. But, uh, Moving on to wrestling, you're you're a pretty big guy, obviously a powerhouse, but you've always added things to kind of uh, put a few more dimensions into your game. Um, how important is it for you to be well-rounded in the ring, and how much do you want to not just be known as a power guy? Hello? Yeah, Moose, can you hear us now? Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, I can hear you now. Ryan, why don't you repeat that question? I, I had mentioned Moose that you're a, kind of known as a power guy. You're you're legitimately a big man in wrestling. Uh, just wondering, uh, as you add and and develop more things to your game in the ring, how important is it to you to be known as a a well-rounded performer as far as uh, in-ring work? 
I mean, I mean, I'm only four years into wrestling. This this month made it four years after wrestling. So I mean, I think it's a it's a long process. And um, when I first came in, I, I I I am known as a powerhouse. I think being a powerhouse was what fans kind of um, saw in me. But I mean, now I'm trying to I'm, I'm still working on on being a total package. Um, doing more more than just power moves and. You know, I'm just trying to mix it all up. I mean, um, when I came into wrestling, I, I wanted to be known as one of the best, and um, that's that's still my goal, and um, that's still something I'm working towards. Um, so, I mean, only t- all I, I mean, I'm doing my best going all around the world and wrestling some of the best guys around the world just to try to hone my skills and turn me into a total package. And, and I mean. And, I don't have to be in the UK right now doing all the shows, but I choose to to leave home and keep myself busy just so I could just be successful and that go outside the size and being being one of the best wrestlers in the world. Mouse, Mouse, you're listening to me. Uh, you can hear me. My name is Stephanie from Steel Chair Magazine. Um, you've been with uh, Impact Wrestling for a little bit more than a year, and uh, uh, it's extremely impressive to see uh, the people's reactions. Um, you really became a fan favorite, and uh, I wanted to know if it, if it was something you were expecting, and how, how, do you, how do you feel about these incredible reactions you receive from the crowd, whether in the United States or in India, too? Thank you. Um, I'm, it's so surreal to me. Um, it, it's very surreal. It's all, um, but I mean, I, it, it was expected. I mean, this was something that I've been working on for a very long time. Even when I was in playing football, um, I always knew how to connect with, with the fans and always knew how to connect with, with whatever crowd I was in. So, um, I guess it's something that, that I've had, I guess it's a talent you could say that I've had. For a while now, it was all my play, football playing days, and um, but to go out there in front of a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, five hundred, no matter what the count is, and you have all these fans chanting your name and um, being so invested with what you do is is still a surreal experience, and um, and I mean, uh, I guess I'm blessed to, for it to be happening. Roy Moose, David Dunn with the New Zealand Pro Wrestling Informer here. Um, a lot of times for a pro wrestler, they'll only be able to work sort of one marquee event a year, whether that's, you know, a, a Wrestle Kingdom, a WrestleMania, etc. Uh, you, you've got Bound for Glory coming up, and you recently did Triple Mania for AAA in Mexico. So I was just wondering uh, if I could get your thoughts on the experience of going down to Mexico and working on AAA's biggest card of the year. Um, triple triple mania was a um I mean I I I was blessed enough to be one of the guys that was called up to go to Mexico to perform in Triple A. Um, I wish I would have had a a better show in there or or put in a in a more high profile match, but it is what it is. I mean, just to be called up there to to be able to perform in front of. 20,000 people or whatever the count was there in, in Mexico City was was awesome and um and I I was glad I was got to represent Impact Wrestling in Mexico but I mean Ralph for Glory is is the 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 event of the year that I'm most looking forward to and like I said this one is going to be extra special to me because um my brother actual blood brother is going to be here with me, and we, like I said, we have some plans, some stuff planned for my entrance, which um, I'm all about those entrances. <laughs> so can't wait for, can't wait for that. Hey Moose, this is Dre Matthews with Hittermode.com again. Uh, it, it's rare for wrestlers nowadays to bring their entrance theme with them from company to company, and you've been able to do that from Ring of Honor to Impact. Uh, what kind of went into that process? Do you acquire the rights to your own theme song, and how has it helped you make? How has it helped you stand out from the rest of the roster? Oh, I cannot hear you. You're breaking up, man. I'm sorry. 
Did you repeat the question? Sorry about that. I was just asking about the transition from Ring of Honor to Impact in terms of you being able to keep your entrance theme, and uh, how do you acquire the rights to that theme, and what kind of went into that? Uh, I mean, that was easy. I mean, my the entrance music was made by my brother or by a family member, so um, I don't think Ring anybody could keep it on that road own the right to that music except for myself or my brother. So um, that's, I mean, that's easy. No matter where I go, that that oh, that will always be be mine, you know. It's just one of those things. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't no adjustment. It wasn't no transition. It was, it's just the music goes where I go. So, uh, but, I mean, I, I, Ring of Honor was great when I was there, and I mean, Impact Wrestling, and Impact Wrestling was great, so. Hi, Moose. Uh, it's Adam from the Impact Lounge here. Uh, good evening to you. I'm in the UK as well, so I know how dark it is. Uh, my question is to do with Bound for Glory 2019, or 18, sorry. Uh, fast forward 12 months. Obviously, you've had a, a few feuds with EC3, which feels like it's unfinished business. But if you were headlining next year's Bound for Glory, who would you like to face, uh, whether they're on the Impact roster or not at the moment, and in what kind of match? Would you think uh, would steal the show? Oh man! If, honestly, we have so many good guys in our in our roster. I mean, it really doesn't matter who who I will face. I mean, I could see myself headlining against Bobby Lashley. I mean, I feel like Bobby Lashley is a fight that is always going to happen. Um, I actually, somebody actually tweeted this to me, and I I, I thought it was very true. I feel like. Me and Bobby is destined to fight forever. So, I mean, I guess to answer your question, I mean, I would love to headline a bound for glory against them. Um, or it could be EC3. It could be Eddie Edwards. I mean, it doesn't really matter. We have a roster filled with great talent. And, I mean, I feel like I could pull out a match of the year candidate with any of those guys. I mean, it's Alistair again. Um, you mentioned D'Angelo Williams earlier. Um, you still in touch with him, and would you like him to step back in the ring? Oh yeah, I, will. I mean, I talked. To, I just talked to him maybe two days ago. I talked to him all the time. Actually, a good friend of mine. Uh, luckily, we be, we became good friends at our tag team uh, tag team lash of six months ago, whatever it was. And, yeah, I would love for D'Angelo to step back in the ring. I think he's made for it. I mean, just the one match that he had in, at Slammiversary proved that he could be a, a great wrestler if he decided that that's what he wanted to do. So hopefully he decides to come back in the ring sometime. Hi, Moose. Uh, Donna Corby from the Irish Daily Mirror here. I wanted to ask you about your match in Dublin um, earlier this year against Jordan Devlin. Many people call it one of the best matches in Irish wrestling this year. What did you make of, of that whole contest as well as the Dublin crowd and the, the Tivoli Theatre crowd? Oh, man, that's it's funny because I was actually on the show with, De uh, with um, Devlin a couple of days ago. Um, we did ICW together, and uh, we actually talked about that crowd, and we both agreed that that, that match was... Um, one of both of our favorite, one of our favorite matches to this date, and it kind of um, not to talk about other company, but one of my favorite match in wrestling history was The Rock versus Hogan at WrestleMania, and I forgot what year it was. But why that match was one of, was one of my favorite was because during the match Hogan went from a heel into a babyface mid match. And I kind of feel like that match with me and Jordan Devlin in, in Ireland, we did the same exact thing where Jordan went from being a heel and being hated by their crowd to midway in the match. They loved him. And that's a test to his skills and I guess a test to, to me helping him get that, get that switch during the match. And uh, just because of that, just because of that, um, moment in the match when he went from a full-blown heel to big-time babyface, I, I feel like we recreated something, one of my best moments in wrestling history with Rock and Hogan, so 
that has to be one of my, my favorite matches to this day. And to answer your question, the Irish crowd is still fucking awesome. They're freaking awesome. And uh, I can't wait to go back, go go back there with the OTT or whatever um, wrestling company it is in Ireland. Hello, Dan. It's Francis from In Ring Pop again. Um, hello, Bruce. Um, my question is, like, in the UK, have you had a chance to try any um, favourite foods in the UK? But also, as well, like, one of the biggest things at the moment is the double down from KFC. Have you ever managed to have a chance to try it yet? Oh, can you repeat the second, second part of that question? Um, have you had a chance to try the new um, KFC double down yet? And is it a, a moose proof burger? <laughs> I'll be honest, if I've been in the UK, I've eaten pretty much the same food day in and day out. Um, just whatever, the, the food spot that's right next door to me, that's what I've been, been going through. Um, so I haven't tried, I haven't really tried um, any different foods here yet, but uh, I'm actually planning a trip, I guess, a vacation next year with with uh, my girl, so um, hopefully she says she's a professional food planner, so um, hopefully when we come back here sometime next year, we'll I'll get to experience more what kind of food the UK has to offer and not eat the same old chicken and rice that I'm eating every day as of right now. Bruce, Gary Keaton here from Freelance Ireland and WrestleZoo. How are you doing? I'm doing good. That's good. Um, you feel with EC3, um, my favorite match you ever had to be the match that was mentioned earlier with Jordan Devlin. What's your personal favorite match and what was it like feeling with EC3? And also, have you ever tried the Guinness? Oh, you said what's my favorite match? It asked your uh, favorite match and also if you've ever tried Guinness. If you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. Like the beer? Yeah. Um, yes, I've tried Guinness and I think it's absolutely disgusting. Um, I'm not a big Guinness drinker. I'm, I, actually, I'm not even a big beer drinker. But to answer, to answer your question, my favorite match thus far in my career and I hate to talk about other companies but I'm just answering the question. But my favorite match has to be um when I was a Ring of Honor versus um versus um Okada and um for those who don't know I'm a super big fan of Okada and um he's somebody that even when I was in football that I studied and watched a lot of his matches and um, looked up to him. So to step into the ring against him was like a, a moment that I would never forget. So, I mean, um, the match wasn't the best match I've had, but it's definitely my favorite match because of just the, the just the story going behind it. We have time for a few more questions from Moose. Uh, hey, uh, Riju from Sportskira again. So your last program was against Eli Drake. What's your opinion of him as the face of the company right now? Thank you. Oh, I have nothing bad to say against e about Eli Drake. Nothing bad at all. I mean, I think he's he deserves everything he's getting. Uh, I've always said before in past interviews and podcasts and stuff that I've done in the past, um, I think Eli Drake is one of those guys that needed needed the needed the bright lights to show the world that he could be a top guy in this business, and um, he's getting the opportunity right now. We'll see what he does with it. I mean, I think in my opinion, he's one of the best guys on the mic, and um, he's one of the best guys on the mic. And um, I mean. I'm, I'm happy for him. I mean, am I, I, do I like the way he goes about winning his matches and the way he carries his business? No, but um, to each his own, I guess. Sorry, Liz. Um, 
what are your thoughts on John Lee's impact in his Texas career in UFW? Oh, John Lee Impact. First of all, I think he has the funniest name ever in professional wrestling history. Uh, second of all, I mean, Johnny, is a, he's, a, he's a good friend of mine, and I'm happy he's on board with Impact Wrestling. And um, I can't wait to see where where his career goes from, from here. And um, um, I can't wait to see him versus um, Eli Drake at Bound for Glory. I mean, um, I know Eli's probably going to have um, – Chris O'Donnell's in his corner, so I mean, so he has an upper edge right now. But I, w- I wouldn't count Johnny Impact out of it, you know. But I think this pay per view is very stacked, man. And um, with those two main ev- uh, main event our pay per view, I can't wait to see how how it goes. Um, no, this is Stephanie from Steel Chair Magazine in UK again. Uh, we are just uh, talking about Johnny Impact, but uh, since Destination X, uh, there has been uh, there have there have been sorry um, such a, a new bunch of talents uh, coming from AAA and um, others um, that are doing something quite impressive, I, uh, in my opinion. And I wanted to know who who would you be interested to to wrestle, um, Pagano, Terrano, maybe Ovi with a tag team partner. Um, what, what do you think of this new breed of people coming, and who do you want to wrestle? Thank you again. Uh, I mean, AAA has some great talent, and um, I'm glad to see the partnership with AAA is, is up and going well, and with um, trading off talent, um, but I've, and I've wrestled all those guys, all those guys you mentioned. At some point in my career, I have wrestled them. Um, when I was in Mexico, so I mean, I know those guys are good. But to answer your question, who do I want to wrestle? I mean, I, I don't. As, right now, I'm focused on Bobby Lashley. And after I'm done with Bobby Lashley, I want to, to, to like I said, go after the global championship. So. If any of those guys are going after a global championship, then I would love to face them. If they're not, I guess we'll have to wait to to see what happens because my focus now is Lashley, and after Lashley, it will be the global championship. And you already answered my question, then. Because my question was, what was next year after Bound for Glory, but I was just the global championship. Yeah. Hey Moose, this is Grant Matthews with HiddenRoad.com again. Uh, it's been well documented that you and ACH have a bit of a friendship beyond the ring, and you recently competed in the Super X Cup not, not too long ago, a few months ago, and hasn't been seen on the show since. But would you like to see him be brought back to the company and kind of be in, in a more prominent role in the X Division, given your friendship? Yeah, definitely. I think ACH is awesome, and um, I think he, he he could definitely help the company out, especially in the um, – in the in that division in the x division you know so um i hope um they offer him something and i hope he could be one of our main mainstay guys in the x division but we'll see i mean i know i know this is a business and um if you're not talking dollars and you're not talking sense so we'll, we'll see what happens but i mean i would i would love aca should be part of our our roster and be part of our X division. Yes. Uh, hey, uh, Riju from Sportskira again. Uh, my question is, if you had to pick your own Mount Rushmore of professional wrestling, whom would you choose? If I had to pick my own what? Mount Rushmore, uh, four of the top guys in professional wrestling of all time. My uh, Mount Rushmore professional wrestling. Uh, that's tough, man. Um, if I had to pick it, it would probably be. I think I saw a picture on the internet the other day, and it would probably be the same four guys that was in the picture. If I'm not mistaken, was it Ric Flair, Austin, Hogan, and who was the last one? 
maybe the Rock. Uh, it will probably have. It will probably be the same pool. But honestly, that that's tough, man. Like, what are you comparing the Mount? It all depends on what you're comparing. Of comparing what, what you. What are you basing it off? Are you basing it off who's made the most money? Are you basing it on who has the most successful? It all depends on what you like. I, that's hard with wrestling, man. I mean, it's very hard with wrestling because of the, the, it's entertainment. It's not real. It's entertainment, you know. So it's kind of hard to say the Mount Rushmore. It all depends on what you're basing it off. If you're basing it off of money, if you're basing it off of how many championships have been won. It all depends on what you're basing it on. So to answer that question, it's very impossible. It would just be my opinion, my four best wrestlers, my four favorite wrestlers, which would be 100% all opinion, no facts. All righty, Moose, we got one final question for you. You may now ask your question. Hey, Moose, Ryan Bowman from com again. We touched on the fact that you were an elite athlete at two different sports and so i'm just curious uh what's the bigger adrenaline rush making a big play on the football field or popping an arena full of people in the wrestling ring and uh thanks for your time today sir uh the bigger uh, it's different man uh i know when i played football it, it's definitely different but uh it's, that's a hard question to answer but just because of my love for wrestling i'll probably say the big adrenaline rush is is being in a wrestling ring and having those fans chanting, this is awesome, or chanting your name, or just being into every moment of your match. Uh, and I don't I have to pick wrestling just because of my love for wrestling. All righty, Moose, I appreciate your time very much. Bound for Glory is about three weeks away. What uh, What's your final thought heading into the home stretch here? Oh man, I can't wait, man. Like I said, this is this pay per view more than any in my career is probably gonna be the most special because I have a family member that is gonna be part of with, with part of it with me. So, um that kinda hits home a little bit. Um so I mean, I can't wait. We're going we're gonna be in a new area, we're getting out of Orlando, so that's also another another first for me. So, um and I'm I heard that ticket sales for Bound for Glory is going really well, and it's about to be, you know, there are only a few tickets left for the actual pay-per-view, and it's going to be sold out. So uh, that's amazing, man. I can't, I, I can't wait for, I can't wait for it. All righty. Media, I appreciate your time very much, as I'm sure Moose and Josh do, and we will talk to you next week, and we'll have the exclusive news on what ingredients are on the Impact Pizza launching this Friday at Crust and Crate in Ottawa. Moose, again, thank you very much. Thanks.